This is Mason Steele, and welcome to the final edition of my Kobolds and Catacombs set review. This will complete all the cards. If you've watched all three, thanks for staying with me. Let's get right into it here at zero mana, our first zero mana collectible card here, Shifting Scroll. Each turn this is in your hand, it's going to transform into a random mage spell. Now that's pretty good because uh, in some games all you want is Kabbalah's Tomb, in some games all you want is an, is an ice block, in some games all you want is a nice little AoE. So at some point in the game this is going to do a lot of work. I do think this is a really good card. Because it's so flexible in control matchups specifically, I do think this is good, right? And, and against a lot of matchups all you want to do is kind of wait to get that Arcane Intellect or get that Kabbalah's Tome. There's so many Mage crowd control cards that a lot of times if you need that it's going to provide that as well. So I do think this is a very good card. It's also going to give your opponent or yourself more access to Ice Block, right? If you have Ice Block in your hand and this in your hand, well maybe you wait on the uh, Ice Block a little bit to try to get an extra Ice Block. Wax Elemental is a 1 mana 0-2 Taunt Divine Shield. Is that good on its own at one mana? It is good, but is it worth putting in your deck? And that's the question we have to answer. Uh, there is an interaction here that I like between this and Cobalt Scalebane, the popular five drop from the last rotation. Uh, that interaction alone, I think this bumps it up to a role player card. The fact that it also has the elemental tag. Gravel Knight is another attempt at a zombie chow type of card, a one mana two three. This is closer to the sort of joust card than the Zombie Chow, right? It's it's more in line with the Joust card than the Zombie Chow. Zombie Chow is much better than this. This does have a place in fun decks that want to abuse Mind Control Attack. Dire Mole is a 1 mana 1 3 neutral here. I always wondered if this would be good enough to see play, and I think it will. The last time we saw this was Sir Finley, and I think one of the reasons Sir Finley was so good was not because of the hero power switching, but just because of the fact you could play it on turn 1 as a 1 3. Those are nice stats on turn 1. They challenge the one health minions that sort of run amok nowadays. But because this is also a beast, it does guarantee it will at least see play in Hunter decks and possibly Druid, Aggro Druid decks. So, very strong card here, and don't be surprised if other classes that don't even care about the beast archetype start running this as a roadblock on turn one. Very good card. Psionic Probe, one mana pre spell, much in the same vein as a Mind Vision. This is going to instead copy a spell from your opponent's deck and add it to your hand. Uh, these cards do tend to see play because they're they're pretty low floor, high ceiling cards. I don't generally like playing these because I'd rather, you know, put put the cards in the in my own deck that I want to play, unless it's something like Thought Steel, we're actually get, get, getting guaranteed value, right? A two for one. Whereas this, you kinda hope to get the Cabal's Tomb in some matchups, you kinda hope to get the Ice Block in some matchups, you kinda hope to get the Call of the Wild. Maybe if there's a Call of the Wild the Hunter deck running around this counters it, but Cool card. Again, not something I personally get excited. Dark Pact here. One mana destroy a friendly minion. But that's not good. You don't generally want to do that. But it says restore 8 health to your hero. Now that, on the other hand, is a lot of health. And it's a, a game swinging health, right? In the right deck, this might see a home. It's hard to predict how good this card will be, but it is playable. Bark Skin, another one mana spell here for Druid. Give a minion plus 3 health. Gain 3 armor. So we have sort of a power word shield here in... Druid, you don't get the card, you get more health, and you get armor. This is good, but is it worth a card in your deck? And that's the hard thats the hard part to figure out, right? One of the nice things about Power Word Shield is it's just kind of like a freebie, right? You just cycle, um, and, and you, you get the advantage of it being a one-mana spell in certain situations, but it does cycle. This does not cycle. That might doom the card. Again, the effect is good. The question becomes, is it worth a card slot in your deck? A card like Mark of the Lotus... It's just much better than this because it, it does something really powerful. Kingsbane is a card I mistakenly reviewed in the last go around as a warrior weapon. It is not a warrior weapon, it is a rogue weapon. So for one mana, one, three, their ability, death rail, shuffle this in your deck, it keeps any enchantments. When I was talking about it as a warrior card, I uh, was talking about a lot about deadly poison and how warrior didn't have access to a deadly poison type card. Now well, rogue does have access to that and that's the key combo here, being able to play this in the early game. Put a deadly poison on it, and then in the, in the later game you get a nice little one mana three attack, three durability weapon going further. Now if you hit it with double deadly poison, all of a sudden it's kind of crazy. There's a neutral card coming up that also synergizes quite well with this card, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But we do have to upgrade the uh, the uh, the stars on this compared to the last time because as a rogue weapon, it's much more powerful because of the interaction with exactly deadly poison. 
Candle Shot is a one mana weapon with one attack and three durability. It says immune while attacking, so Hunter gets access to a Lights Justice type of card here. The non-ping classes always appreciate the extra pings, but I don't think this is something they necessarily need or want. It's a good card on turn one, but again the question becomes with these one mana cards, is it worth a card slot in your deck? And I don't think it is. Scorp-O-Matic, two mana, one, two, mech. Interesting, we got mech synergy here. Destroy a minion with one or less attack. So we have a little Doomsayer Killer here. Um, that's the big application I got with this guy, Doomsayer Killer. Uh, I think Crazed Alchemist does this a little bit better. It's more flexible compared to this guy. What else can you kill with this? You can kill Mana Worm, Tunnel Trogs, going second. So there are, there are a lot of nasty 1-3s out there in the game, especially in Wild, to worry about. But I don't think you worry about them enough to sort of put this really narrow tech card in. Plated Beetle, 2 mana death rattle, gain 3 armor. So this is a a basically just straight up power creeped river crocolis. The problem it has, it's competing directly with Galaka Crawler right now. And Galaka Crawler is going to hit a, almost the majority of the time in standard right now. So even in Wild, the Pirate Menace is kind of going into Wild as well. Murmuring Elemental here, a, a Battle Cry Doubler. Uh, the last time we saw Battle Cry Doubler it was for Brand's Bronze Beard. This card's a little bit different here. It won't work with um, Ixakis because we're in Shaman here, and it, it won't sort of get used the same way. It's going to be used as more of a combo card, where Brand, you could sometimes just play it as a threat. Whereas this guy is comboing in Shaman, I think a lot with Thrall, with Doppelgangster, with stuff like Blaze Collar, a lot of the el elemental cards have battle cries, the Discover one, and of course Kalamos at 10 mana, you can get double Kalamos effect. So, pretty cool, specifically with Thrall and Doppelgangster, right? You play this before Doppelgangster, and you evolve it, and you get a, a cr even crazier Doppelgangster evolve turn. So, very much a playable card here. Cavern Shiny Finder, 2 mana, 3 1. Battlecry, draw a weapon from your deck. So the point with this is obviously to find your King's Bane. The King's Bane is a legendary weapon, so you only put one in your deck. So it's kind of hard to build your deck around King's Bane unless you have a card like this. And so that's pretty cool. Now the, the stats are, alone aren't that bad, considering if you look at something like Loot Hoarder, right? Loot Hoarder, 2 mana, 2-1, two, that sees play quite a bit, draws a card. This guy, Battlecry, draw a weapon from your deck. Not exactly drawing a card, but pretty much the same thing, right? It does replace itself. So, very good card here, specifically with the King's Bane. And uh, maybe finds a home in non-King's Bane's deck, just because of how efficient it is. Potion of Heroism, give a minion Divine Shield, draw a card. We saw the interaction between this and Lanessa. 2 mana is a lot more than 1 mana, so it is awkward in that sense. But I think the interaction with Lanessa uh, guarantees this is a role player card. Crushing Hand, deal 8 damage to a minion just for 2 mana. So in the early game, this is not something you really want to be doing because you're basically going to skip your next turn. In the late game, it gets much more interesting tempo, much like a Saf. Twilight Acolyte is another priest epic you might have to craft, so the number of epics we need this expansion is getting a little bit alarmingly high. If you're holding a dragon, swap this minion's attack with another minions. That's very good, both in the early game and especially good in the late game. And one of the priest's weaknesses this sort of covers up, right? You you can't kill that Ysera. Well, now you can swap the Ysera's attack and even steal it with a small shadow priest, right? So, yeah, very good card. We'll see a lot of play. Not too much to say here. It's just filling the holes that priests have with the sort of blind spot with Shadow Word Pain, power, Shadow Word Death. And, uh, yeah, just kind of not a fair card. Very good in Dragon Priest. We'll see a lot of play. Toothly Chest here, 0-4 oh, for 3. At the start of your next turn, set this minion's attack to 4. So not a good card, not much to say here. Stone Skin Bask Alisk, 3 mana Divine Shield Poisonous for 1-1, uh, one, one, and it's a beast. So it's very much like the Giant Wasp. The Giant Wasp didn't see much play, but I think a very much a playable card. This, in certain matchups, will be better than Wasp, because it, if your opponent doesn't have a hero power ping, this could do a lot of work. It might be in the set to sort of deal with enemy tar creepers. That's kind of the, the matchup that it, it, it's kind of favored against here in the early game right now. Very hard to say how good this is. It is interesting to note it is another beast with poisonous, so Deathstalker Rexar is getting more and more combos with poisonous, right? You have the Kodo plus poisonous, you have the Bat plus poisonous as a board clear, you have the Dread Scale plus poisonous as a continual board clear. So yeah, Deathstalker Rexar loves to see this guy. 
as poisonous is very valuable when you're making those. Shrieking Shroom, three mana, one, two. At the end of your turn, summon a random one cost minion. So another end of turn card here. When you get a random one cost minion, you can expect to get a probably a one, two, or a two, one. For three mana, that's not great. If you knew this could happen over and over and over, I mean, that's like a morose kind of thing. It's a little bit of value. Um, I do think morose is better in general, and Morose didn't see a lot of play, so I don't think this makes the cut, but it is a fun little card here. Sewer Crawler, a 1-1 one, one with the Battle Cry, summon a 2-3 Giant Rat, so this is kind of a reversed Razor Fen Hunter. Cobalt Barbarian here, another attempt at the Ogre, 3 mana 4-4, four, four. I think this is much worse than the neutral Ogre from times past. At the start of your turn, attack a random enemy here in Warrior. Cobalt Apprentice here, quote unquote fixed Mad Bomber. It's 3 mana 2 1, but it only splits the damage to enemies. Uh, the stats on this are really unfortunate as a 2 1. If it was a 2 2, it'd be much more interesting, but as a 2 1, I don't think this is any good at all. Gilded Gargoyle, a priest card with Death Rattle, add a coin to your hand. It's a 2 2. I think you can be doing better things in Priest than this. This is a little bit interesting in other classes, but right now, Priest. I don't think need this kind of thing. Bungle Enchanter, a 3 mana 3-3. Three, three. Battle Cry Restore 2 health to all friendly characters. So this is kind of like the Dark Scale Healer. I do think it is a role player just because the stats make more sense than the Dark Scale Healer. Dragon Slayer, a 3 mana 4-3. Three, three. Battle Cry deals 6 damage to a dragon. So this is kind of Priest's worst nightmare as it's both a 4 power card and going to kill a dragon. Yeah, the number one thing it's going to kill is Draconoid Operative, I guess. Uh, and a little unfortunate that it doesn't just say kill a dragon, right? Some of those big dragons out there, this won't actually kill. It just does six damage to. Not that that's bad, but it would kind of be cool if this just actually killed any dragon. Cave Hydra here. We have a three mana two four beast. Also damages the minions next to whoever this attack. So you're getting the cleave almost for free on this card. This card's really good, right? If this card gets buffed, Houndmaster, it's like a nightmare. You can attack small things, kill big things. Um, so yeah, like a 3 mana 2-4 beast almost has the correct stats, a 2-5 would be the correct stats, but it, this gets the cleave almost for free, right? You give this poisonous with the adapt, you give this a buff, and it becomes really strong, very really good card, definitely see play. 3 mana is a hard sort of breakthrough spot, this competes with the bear shark, the eagle horn bow, and the animal companion, but the upside in this is kind of crazy. And the fact that it kind of AoEs, and AoE is a kind of blind spot with Hunter. They have to rely on uh, stuff like Explosive Trap and stuff like that. Not very re reliable AoE. This card will see play. It's very good. Bolsterous Bard, 3 mana, 3-2. Three, so not great stats there. Battle Cry, give your other minions 1 health. So not plus 1, plus 1, just plus 1 health. And that's what makes this card kind of underwhelming. If it gave all your creatures plus one attack instead, that would be, I think, a lot better. So, not a great card here. Healing Rain, restore 12 health divided randomly among all friendly characters. So this is kind of a crazy card here. Uh, the combo that comes to mind is Light Warden, right? If Light Warden's out, do you just do 30 damage with this thing or, or close to it? Pretty crazy here because each health is going to be an individual ping. So any sort of heal activation cards like North Shire Cleric on your opponent's side might mill them quite a lot here, right? Pretty cool card here. Very good. At the very least, if you're losing the board and you're behind on health, this can heal you for 12 for 3 mana. The Darkness. Interesting legendary here. 4 mana. 20-20. But as we saw on the stream, it starts dormant. So you basically get nothing for 4 mana. You're going to shuffle 3 candles into the enemy deck. And when your opponent draws all three, you get a 20-20. Now because the last, you assume the last candle they draw will be on their turn, then on your turn you will be able to attack with the 20-20. You don't get anything for four mana, and they actually have to draw all three. If anyone can remember the Beneath the Grounds, Beneath the Grounds was a cool card, and it would often you know, pop off one to two times. But to actually get all three, you almost have to go through someone's entire deck. Sneaky Devil, a stealth demon. Your other minions have one attack. This guy's pretty cool. He is weak to some AoEs out there like Nova and Consecration. One of those cards that is good in theory, but in practice it probably doesn't do enough. Shroom Brewer, 4 mana, 4-4, four, four, restore 4 health. So kind of like an Earthen Farseer here. 
and we'll see play much like Earth and Farseer did. And it, it, if you're looking for a four drop that can heal you, this guy will do the job. He's uh, not exciting, but he kind of is serviceable, right? You can target that heal anywhere you want. Shimmering Corsair. Only you can target this with spells and hero powers. It's a neutral 4 mana 3 3 beast. A little underwhelming stats though. If this was a 3 4, I think it'd be a little bit more interesting as a 3 3. I don't like it that much at 4 mana. It can definitely get out of hand and you can definitely win the game off this card. I just don't like it on turn 4 and that's what holds it back I think. Kobold Monk is a 4 mana 3 6. Now on the other hand, this card has really good stats and it's the first time we've seen this 3 6 body on a neutral and that alone might guarantee it sees play in some in some places right so your hero can't be targeted by spells or hero powers is a pretty good effect it's gonna save you from those uh, base shaman decks in wild it's gonna save you from mages both in wild and standard if you're looking for this effect it's pretty good and having the 3-6 body makes it a very formidable presence on turn 4 very good card hooked reaver this 4 mana 4-4 four, four demon says battle cry if you have 15 or less health Gain plus three plus three and a taunt. Whoa! So if if you're uh, you're getting beat down really early, you can play a four mana seven seven taunt in the early game. And in a late game, you get a lot of tempo by playing a four mana seven seven taunt. You can play two of these at the same. You can even tap and play two of these on the same turn. So this card's really good. Uh, the question is: is getting down to fifteen either too risky or too hard? You sort of activate this at some point in the game. I don't think the I think because because you can just play it as a four four means that it's a good a good not only a good card but a great card. Eben Dragonsmith Battlecry reduce the cost of a random weapon in your hand by two. Uh, the most likely dragon weapon classes are warrior and paladin. In it, if we look to Hearthstone's past, in paladin the biggest target I think for this is the new legendary weapon going from 6 mana to 4 mana and vine cleaver would go from 7 to 5 so it kind of curves with vine cleaver that interaction is pretty powerful actually vine cleaver one of the best weapons in the game the only thing holding it back is you couldn't play it until turn 7 whereas this lets you get it out early so that interaction is pretty good in in warrior the card you're looking at is actually gorehal you go from a 7 to a 5 again Curse Disciple, five, four mana, five one, and Death Rattle summon a five one. So if you didn't just want Magma Rager, you wanted two Magma Ragers. Well, here you go. Against certain classes, this is a nightmare, right? Against a class without access to pings, this actually is pretty good. So yeah, I don't, I don't think this card's very good, but in some situations, it's super scary, right? Ra Magma Rager is not good. But it can be good. Astral Tiger, 4 mana, 3, 5. So it, it does pass the vanilla test there. Death Rattle Shuffle, a copy of this minion intro deck. Very cool. And this is looking to synergize with the sort of recruiting deck. Where you only put 4 drops or higher in your deck to combo with Oaken Summons. And we saw that on stream where they were playing the, the big 8 drop as well. So very cool card. I like the design of this a lot. Uh, nothing unfair about this card. Flanking Strike, this will of course fit a home into the only spells hunter deck. The question is, is it strong enough to see play in all hunter decks? Deal 3 damage to a minion, summon a 3-3 three, three wolf. If you can do exactly that on turn 4, this card is amazing. Trog Gloom Eater is a 5 mana taunt poisonous 1-5, pretty much an arena card here. Uh, the 1 attack is sort of a liability against things like potion. That interaction makes it pretty unplayable and constructed. Fine arena card though, I imagine. Possessed Lackey is a 5 mana 2-2 two, two, recruit a demon. I don't like that it's a 2-2. Two, two. It really should have been a 3-2 just to exactly avoid the potion of madness. Green Jelly, 5 mana 3-3. Three, three. And at the end of turn, summon a 1-2 ooze with taunt. So this is kind of like uh, Hogger Jr. for one less mana. You get a 3-3 three, three instead of a 4-4 four, four, and you get a 1-2 instead of a 2-2. Two, two. One of Hogger's biggest problems is that he costs exactly 6. And uh, that is sort of where you can't mess around. Once your minion costs 6, you really have to be doing something kind of great, something important for your deck. The fact that this is a 5 instead of a 6 might mean it's better than Hogger. But Hogger wasn't very good, so don't imagine this guy's very good either. Bungle Mancer here, Battlecry give adjacent minions plus 2 plus 2. Very much like a Defender of Argus card, but also very much not like a Defender of Argus card. So let's take a look at the differences here. Going from 4 to 5 mana is a big deal. Anytime you do that, it's a big deal. You lose a health. That's not as big a deal, but it is still a big deal. 
don't get the taunt, which is very important because Argus was so small, it was important for him to hide behind taunts for board control. Whereas this thing just kind of gets picked off pretty easy. If you do hit with it, it is definitely strong. They're tr stronger than Defender of Argus the turn you play it. Corrosive Sludge, 5 mana, 5-5, five, five, Battlecry, destroy your opponent's weapon. So we have a Harrison Jones replacement card here for budget players. You gain a health on your creature, which is important. You lose that card draw. I don't think that's a fair trade. I think Harrison Jones is actually better than this guy. But now if you just want to run all the weapon removals, you can. We have access to... How many? There's so many, right? Harrison Jones plus eight oozes right now. The little known Toxic Sewer Ooze also can uh, take a durability. And there's also the Corsair. So if you if you want to run an anti-weapon deck, the tools are there for you to just absolutely destroy every weapon. So kind of funny. Gem Studded Golem here, six drop, five nine taunt. Can only attack if you have five or more armor. So this guy kind of competes directly with the neutral card, Hungry Eaton. They're both six mana. They're both sort of huge taunts. The Eaton was a four ten, is a four ten, which dodges a lot of the priest removal, whereas this guy dies to both death and Anduin right now, and uh, it has a pretty big drawback of you can't attack unless you have five or more armor. Now, if you have a huge taunt, the likelihood that you are starting to build up armor is pretty high, so that's a bonus for him. He has less health than the Hungry Eaton. But the Eaton does, of course, summon, you got to imagine, a random 2-2 two, two, at the very least. So you can think of the Eaton as having a 8 health. I do kind of like the Eaton better than this. Eaton has the upside of if it gets summoned to play with Recruit, you actually get the bonus of all the health. Corridor Creeper is a 7 mana, 5-5 five, five beast, costs 1 less whenever a minion dies while this is in your hand. So notice that it says any minion, not your minions, right? So if you board clear somebody... There's a good chance that this might actually be zero, and then you can just get the tempo back immediately after a Twisting Nether or a Flame Strike or one of the many new AoEs coming in the, uh, the the set here. So yeah, I think exactly in control decks, this is pretty interesting. I don't think you play this in sort of normal tempo decks though. It's a bad top deck, and uh, you can be doing better things, I think, like Bone Mare. But in control decks, this is very interesting. I think it is is very playable in a control deck with with exactly big removal like Twisting Nether. Roque Delar is the Hunter legendary weapon. Battlecry, if your deck has no minions, fill your hand with Hunter spells. So uh, to my sides, it was kind of the, a joke card. I did give it a role player status because I had faith in Blizzard that there would be some sort of role player deck that it goes in. Apparently, we have more support for it here with the legendary weapon. You're basically paying three mana to draw your full hand. Violent Worm, Death Rattle, Summon, 7 1 1 grubs and it's a 8 mana 7 7. It is likely you won't get actually the full board of 7 grubs because you're likely to have other things. If you don't have anything else on the board it's actually really good. So it's kind of a cool card in that sense. If you have exactly this worm your opponent kills it and you kind of get the delayed Anixia value. Woe Cleaver it's 8 mana 3 3 so just like the shaman legendary weapon the stats are really underwhelming kind of unfortunate they didn't at least give these weapons 4 attack so let's take a look here after your hero attacks recruit a minion from your deck now we're gonna assume if you're playing woke cleaver you only put big creatures in your deck in which case you get some a little bit of value here I don't like the fact that this kinda gets wrecked by big taunts you're kinda forced to sort of smash your face a possible Lich King or something. If this goes off three turns in a row, that's pretty damn good, however, because you're getting a lot of tempo by the third turn. The first turn, not great tempo. The second turn, pretty good tempo. And then third turn, kind of amazing tempo because you basically, you know, played three huge things for the cost of one thing, right? Nine mana Sleepy Dragon here. We have another neutral dragon, a 412 Taunt. I think this is a very strong card because of, of these sort of dragon synergies we have going throughout the set. Stuff like Dragon Hatcher, which I talked about in the, the last review, I specifically mentioned Primordial Drake. Now here we have an even better target for the Dragon Hatcher. 9 mana, 4, 12. So it's kind of like a Yesera without the spells, but you get Taunt, which is a very big deal. So this card's very good. Master Oakheart might be my favorite card from the new set coming up here. 9 mana, 5, 5, so not great, but it Battlecry, recruit a 1, 2, and 3 attack minion from your deck directly into play. Notice it's not 1, 2, 3 cost, but 1, 2, 3 attack. So kind of like a deck builder's dream here. You can do funny stuff like 
get out your Baron Rivendare and your Tortellian Shellraiser and your Sludge Belcher all at once and go off. You can pull crazy things like Hadronox, the new Void Lord and Warlock, the new Dragon Hatcher, which we just talked about as your two. So a lot of really crazy opportunities to get more than a lot, lot more than nine mana's worth of stuff for nine mana. As long as you sort of build your deck around this card, it can be very powerful. And I can't wait through all the different combinations of stuff with this guy. Very cool card. Thanks for making it to the end of the video, guys. I have links here for more content. And if you would like to see the channel grow, please click that subscribe button in the middle. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.